Hello and welcome to part three of topic seven on optical properties of polymers. In this part of the lecture we're going to focus on how to modify the transparency and color of a polymer as well as how to use light to actually characterize polymers themselves. Let's begin by looking at transparency. As we mentioned before, amorphous polymers tend to be more transparent than semi-crystalline or crystalline polymers. And again, the reason for this is because the crystalline regions of the polymer have dimensions roughly on the same as those of the wavelength of light and therefore scatter the light as it enters the polymer. So we can generally make more transparent materials by reducing the percentage of crystallinity in the polymer. The downside to this, of course, is that by reducing the percentage of crystallinity, we also reduce other properties, such as mechanical properties, that rely on high levels of crystallinity in the polymer. One way around this is to add large numbers of nanocrystalline sized nucleates, or to use rapid cooling, which both reduce the spherulite crystal size, which of course improves transparency of semi-crystalline polymers, because with smaller crystals, you're going to scatter less light. Another approach is to change the pendant groups on the sides of the molecules. So in PMMA, by replacing, which is uh, polymethyl methacrylate and acrylic, by replacing the hydrogen atoms that are pendant to the main backbone chain with fluorine atoms, we change the absorption of light in the molecule. And when we do reduce that absorption, we also increase the transmission of light through that molecule, that polymer. Color is another important aspect of polymers. In general, color is a function of how light is absorbed or diffracted by the polymer itself and the various coloring additives that are provided to the polymer. There are two general categories of additives provided to polymers. The first are called dyes. Dyes are organic liquids that have a minor effect on light transmission but can change the absorption of light at specific wavelengths. This is done generally by delocalized electrons such as the rotating double bond in a benzene ring. Another option is pigments. Pigments are inorganic materials that heavily scatter or absorb light. A good example of a pigment is carbon black, which is added to polymers to make them look black. We can also use light to our advantage, or the transmission of light to our advantage, to characterize polymers in a technique called Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy, or FTIR spectroscopy. We pass light through a polymer, a thin sheet of polymer, in order to determine what kind of polymer it is. The way this works is that we, have, we measure the transmission of light through the polymer at different wavelengths. At certain wavelengths, you'll have complete or 100% transmission of light. But at some specific wavelength, you'll actually reduce the transmission. You'll absorb more light because you'll be exciting, at that particular wavelength, you'll be exciting particular bonds within the MER structure of the polymer. In this particular example, we see that there's more absorption of light at the carbon-hydrogen bond wavelength. And again, we see tremendous absorption of light when we reach the carbon double bonded to oxygen in this particular molecule. So this structure allows us to determine what the polymer is made out of by examining the presence of carbon-hydrogen bonds, carbon to du oxygen double bonds, and other types of bonds that are present in a molecule. This concludes Topic 7 on Optical Properties of Materials.